Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm going to be reacting to What is Hinduism? I, I don't remember if this is a request or not, but if you, have a, if you have a request, please leave it in the comments below. Please leave a link to that video as well so I know exactly which one to react to. I believe this was brought up because I talked about Buddhism, which is something I learned in my world history class. And it's something that I could relate to a little bit more than, say, a lot of other religions. Um, <clears throat> And um, also, if you want to watch this uninterrupted, unpausing, and if you have not seen this, please go to the description below. There will be a link to this video directly, and please go watch it. They deserve the view. They put in the hard work. I did not. <laughs> the hard work I put in is just this. But um, So I'll be pausing throughout the any time that I feel that I need to share my thoughts, and you're going you're gonna to know exactly how I think about this. I'm honestly interested. Uh, I'm curious about a lot of religions, and I hear that Hinduism... Uh, birth Buddhism, so it's it will be curious to know about this. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Hinduism, the religion of over a billion people, is the world's <clears throat> oldest religion and probably the most confusing one to non-Hindus. Some say it isn't even a religion. Well, sorry, he said the oldest religion. I would have thought there was. I know there's been many religions in the past. Um, never, not ones that survived through history. Uh, the one that I'm a bit familiar with was the uh, was a a carving of a, a a voluptuous woman, and if you touch it, you're supposed to get pregnant from it or have a baby or something with it. It's a fertility god, I believe. That's it. So it's older than that one. More a way of life. Hindus themselves call it the Sanatana Dharma. Sorry, I pause it again. Again, that's the reason why I, I can relate a lot to Buddhism because it's not the belief of a god, but a way of life. And that's something I really, I, that's what really hit me with Buddhism. So that's really cool. The eternal tradition. So what is Hinduism? Whoa, Does Yolo apply to them? And who is this elephant guy? Well, let's find out. Sorry, the background had looked like a whole bunch of I think women or carvings or statues or something. Is that a temple too? <laughs> I meant to pause and watch it, but I paused it too many the times already. Oldest active religion. It's the mm -hmm. result okay. of the merging oh, yeah. of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and the nomads that came into India around 1500 BC. Some scholars say it could even go back many more thousands of years. Maybe aliens. <laughs> we won't delve too deep into dates because dates in Hinduism are very, very controversial. Okay, so, okay, so correct, uh, I got corrected there oldest living religion so yeah it might it might not be the oldest religion but it is the oldest religion current to date i believe i believe that's what he meant but one thing is certain hinduism is old like at least 36 betty whites <laughs> hinduism has been around for so long that it and the concept of india itself are inseparable wow. hindu and india even come from the same word Sanskrit was the ancient language of the Hindus, and the Sanskrit name for the Indus River is Sindhu. The ancient Persians who sat across the Indus tended to switch their S's to H's, so Sindhu became Hindu. Hmm. So the people living across the river became Hindus. The Persians told the Greeks, who dropped that very not Greek-like H, stuck in a very Greek-like E to the end, and boom, India. Huh. Hinduism has a long, long history. But today we'll be focusing on just the core beliefs of Hindus because I don't have the willpower to animate a three hour long video. <laughs> Hindus are a diverse group. Some are strict, dedicating their lives to prayer, while others don't believe in any gods but still follow Hindu philosophy. To make things e that might be me. easier to understand, let's break Hinduism down into seven core beliefs. So, here's my rap about the seven Hindu beliefs. Sorry I'm pausing so much, but there's just... Um, again, I'm trying to give you my thoughts here. So is there only seven core beliefs or is he just focusing on seven core beliefs? It makes it sound like he's just focusing on seven. I don't know if there's only seven though. I know in Buddhism there's four pillars, but I forgot what those pillars are. Although I understand uh, the, the main thing I understand for Buddhism, which I genuinely do believe is that life is suffering and it's genuinely true. There's everything's out there trying to kill you. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily everything, but you get what I mean. There's, you know, germs, viruses, animals, other people, you know. You promised you weren't gonna do the rap. Come on, you're better than this, man. Fine. Here's the regular version then. One. Belief in one universal soul. Hindus believe in a universal soul known as Brahman. A formless, genderless source of all reality. I thought that was a god. Brahman is the universe 
and the material that makes up the universe. It's a trippy concept, but think of Brahman as an ocean and everything else as drops propelling out of that ocean. Separate for a time, but still the same thing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two, belief in an immortal individual soul. In Hinduism, mm -hmm. souls are known as Atman. Actions of the soul while in a body have effects on that soul's next life. When you die, your soul moves to another new body. This is called transmigration. The kind of body I thought it was also called reincarnation. The soul inhabits next is determined by karma. Yes. Tree. And uh, and this is what I know about karma before he goes deeper is the fact that if you're a good person, you ascend. And if you're a bad person, you descend. So like you humans, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know the ranking system, but my the, from what I understood is that you go, if you're terrible, you go to like animal forms. To a dog or to a cat or whatever and the, the if you continue to be terrible you continue to go down whatever this ranking system is to maybe like a rat or something like that or if you if you are a good rat <laughs> which is weird to say but you go up to a dog and a good dog you go to a human or something i don't again i don't know what the ranking system is but you ascend or descend based on your karma belief in karma karma is action usually good or bad actions that affect society for Hindus, karmic actions in the past affect us today, and our actions today affect our soul's future. What's with him beating the person? Did it, dude, what the heck, man? Four, <laughs> belief in moksha. I shouldn't have the paused for that, but... The Hindu life is to somehow get back to Brahman. If a Hindu can do this, they will be freed from the cycle of life and death. This is called moksha. You can achieve moksha by realizing your oneness with Brahman. How you realize this is up to you. For this reason, Hindus pray... Lead me from the unreal to the real. 5. Belief <clears throat> in the Vedas The Vedas are Hindu sacred books of knowledge. There are four Vedas. Hindus believe that all four were divinely revealed to ancient Hindu sages. <laughs> uh, he was, he's going by so quick, I was, look, I was trying to read the books. But, we'll take a closer look at the Vedas in a while. I guess this is a... 6. Belief in cyclical time hmm. For Hindus, there are no beginnings or endings. Time is a series of cycles, each cycle containing four ages or yugas. There's the Krita, the Treta, the Dwarapada, and the Kali. Added together, the four yugas total about 4.32 million years. At the end of each cycle, declining human morality leads to the total destruction of reality. Hindus believe that we are in the fourth and final yug, Kali. 7. Belief. So that means the destruction then, right? in dharma. Dharma is a difficult word to translate to English. Proper behavior is the best that I could come up with. Dharma maintains balance in the universe. As long as everything in the universe, like animals, plants, and humans, follow their dharma, then everything will be fine. <laughs> if they break from the dharma, though, things will be super not fine. Each being has its own dharma. A lion's dharma is to kill and eat antelope, a king's dharma is to rule well. A subscriber's dharma is to smash the like button and ring the notification bell. On his channel. For humans, their specific dharma is usually based on their age and their caste. An old priest will have a very different dharma than a young merchant, for example. So those are the seven core beliefs of Hinduism. Hmm. With them, you can understand the Hindu mindset. That's a, Unlike that's a lot. Christianity or Islam, Hinduism is a non-profit organization. There is no <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, when it said non-profit, <laughs> it made me think like, profit as in like to make money, not profit as in like leaders. Or Muhammad Sorry. for Hindus. There is no <laughs> Bible, wrong. Quran, or Torah. Instead, oh, really? they have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, oh. of different sacred texts. The four Vedas form the basis of the Hindu faith. So let's take a look at them. One, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is a collection of songs that praise and discuss ideas like truth, reality, and the universe, along with discussions yeah. on war, weddings, and rituals. 2. The Yajur Veda The Yajur Veda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. 3. The Sama Veda Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. It is mostly okay. songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because it's set to music. 4. The Atharva Veda The Atharva Veda is my favorite one. Do you want to curse your enemies? Or charm that special someone? 
maybe learn to invoke rain or discover herbal medicine along with tips on warfare, like how to make poison arrows, well, this Veda has you covered, <clears throat> along with a bunch of other charms and curses. It even has a curse against cursors. Avoid us, O oh curse, as a burning fire avoids a lake. Strike him here that curses us, as the lightning of heaven the tree. A link to the Atharveda is in the description, just in case you need a spell to get a wife or another to banish pigeons from your presence. It's it's great. After the okay, sorry, I wanted to pause because the reason why I pause instead of talking over because I want to hear him. When I talk, I might not be able to hear him. And also, sometimes maybe people who are watching are also wanting to hear what he says and what I say. So to prevent talkovers and to make sure I hear everything, I pause it. So I'll say the first book is quite interesting to me. I'm, I'm I definitely might have to watch a video on that one because that. I, that rings out to me for some odd reason. I gotta go back and watch that, but I'll, 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 go, I'll go back later. The Vedas come the Upanishads, which are like a sequel that makes the original make much more sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC and 500 BC, during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their ideas became the Upanishads. The Upanishads are books on philosophy, like we would expect from Plato or Aristotle. They're all about questioning, doubt, debate, and finding the answers to life's difficult questions. I like that. The theme in the Upanishads is that people are not their minds, or bodies, or egos, but their Atman. Your soul is you. Everything else is unreal and temporary. After the holy mm. texts like the Vedas and the Upanishads are other less divine but still important texts. These include stuff like the Puranas, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Puranas are like encyclopedias of Hindu beliefs. There are 18 well-known Puranas. The Puranas cover things from yoga, to army organization, to taxation, to the caste system, to hell, gods, and everything in between. The Bhagavad Gita, the Gita for short, is one of Hinduism's most important texts. The Gita takes place on a battlefield, where Arjuna, a great warrior, refuses to fight. Lord Krishna steps in to urge Arjuna to fight, and their discussion covers things such as dharma and how to live your best life. Arjuna eventually fought after Lord Krishna taught him the truth about dharma. As a member of the warrior caste, Arjuna's dharma was to fight against evil. The lesson of the Gita is that everyone faces difficult choices, but they must act on them according to their dharma, no matter how unpleasant. Along with- Hmm, that's interesting. They must act upon it according to their dharma. Hmm. With all these philosophical texts, Hinduism has two action-packed epics, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Ramaya, the early of the two texts, tells the story of Prince Rama. In the epic, you find out about his 14-year-long exile, the abduction of his wife Sita, his battle with the evil demon Ravana, and his awesome monkey sidekick Hanuman. The second epic, the Mahabharata, is the longest poem in the world five times the length of the Bible and Jeez. eight times the length of the Iliad and Odyssey oh combined. It rivals any soap opera you've ever seen when it comes to drama. Murder, in Hindi. betrayal, <laughs> love, love murder, and giant battles. The Mahabharata has it all. The theme running through the Ramaya and the Mahabharata is that Dharma must be followed for society to function. Hmm. I will say I'm quite interested in the first book, or the Rama. Ramayana. I just think the second book might take too long. It's like a series. It's like Game of Thrones, but probably like 16, 16 seasons. Well, not 16 seasons. 16 Games of Thrones put together. That might be just a little bit too long. In Hinduism, there are four goals a person should aim for to have a good life. The first of these is Dharma, followed by Artha, the pursuit of prosperity and good reputation. Kama, pleasure both in body and in mind. <laughs> Everyone knows this one. <laughs> and moksha, the release from the cycles of rebirth. Hindus should practice artha and kama with dharma in order to achieve moksha. There are also six temptations Hindus should try and avoid. Kama, lust and materialism. This kama is different from the good kama mentioned above. I know. Next is kruda, which is anger. Lobha, which is greed. Moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people and power. Mada, which is pride and matsarya, which is jealousy. By following their dharma and avoiding these six temptations, a Hindu can break the cycle of rebirth and have their soul merge back into Brahman. 
I will say a lot of that speaks to me. <clears throat> kind of, kind of. I think the way I live my life, a little bit. I think. But even though everything comes from Brahman, who is the one real thing in Hinduism, Hindus do, after all, have thousands of gods. So let's take a look at them. Okay, before I go on, and to speak on those those things that you don't do. Of course, uh, I can say I don't do those things, but in reality, only other people can, if they tell you the absolute truth, will tell you whether you are those or not. You can claim to, like, I can claim to be, oh, I don't do any of those things. No, 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 that's not how it works. Oh, at least in my mind. You know, I try to live a good life and try to be good to people, but I will never ever say, like, I would, I would, uh, if someone asks if I'm nice, I'll say I try to be as nice as I can be. I will never say I am nice because I'm sure there are times where I'm not nice. And the way to know the truth is based on other people telling you. Now, of course, they have to be truthful to those other people. First, there's Brahma, the creator. He created everything in the universe, but he is not the universe itself because that's Brahman. They aren't the same thing. That last letter changes a lot, apparently. He has four heads. The heads face each of the four directions to represent the four Vedas, which he created, and the four Yugas. He also holds a book, which represents knowledge. Oh, and he rides a giant swan, because he's just fancy. His consort is Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Vishnu, the preserver, is the second member of the Hindu trinity. He preserves the world created by Brahma until it is eventually destroyed by Shiva. He holds a discus, which he uses to cut down anyone that tries to mess with his dharma along with a conch, which symbolizes victory and the five elements. Vishnu has many, many avatars, such as Krishna or Rama, who he uses to defend Dharma on Earth. Oh, and he rides a giant eagle named Garuda. Vishnu has two consorts, the goddess Lakshmi and Budevi. Budevi is the Earth goddess and Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth. Next is Shiva the Destroyer, the third member of the Hindu trinity. It's his job to destroy the universe in order to prepare for its renewal at the end of each cycle of time. The most Sorry, uh, so I've always understood Shiva to be female. Which is, I, and I did another video that probably was released before this one, if I put them out in order correctly. Um, yeah, I even said it there. It's, it's kind of, I don't know, I wonder why that is. Well, it's Western part interpretation of the images, probably. The most identifiable of his features is his third eye which he almost always keeps closed. If he does open it and you're in front of him, then you will have your face melted off. When not on making existence, Shiva <laughs> enjoys long walks with his bull named Nandi. At the end of the Kali Yuga, the fourth age of the world, Shiva will perform a dance that destroys the universe. Which is odd because people have told me that my dance moves make them wish the world would end. So me and Shiva have quite a lot in common. Paravati and Sati are Shiva's consorts. <laughs> Shiva also has two sons, Ganesha and Murugan. Ganesha is worshipped as the remover of obstacles, and Murugan is the god of war. Ganesha uh. holds a very special place in the heart of Hindus, due to him being the remover of obstacles. The elephant head is the most obvious clue to identifying him. Why? He was actually born with a human head, but after Shiva cut that one off, he kind of had to make do with an elephant one. <laughs> Wait, that was that's one of his sons, right? And he cut off the head and then put an elephant on there. Why can't he just reattach the head back if he could attach the element head? Ele elephant head, jeez. If you're Christian or Muslim, you're aware that your religion has a bunch of different denominations, like Catholics or Protestants, Sunni and Shia. Hinduism has these too. Hindus developed four major denominations, some of which have their own subdivisions. The Vaishnavas primarily worship Vishnu and Shaivas primarily worship Shiva and his sons. Huh. Smartas follow sacred texts like the Puranas, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata rather than the Vedas. They worship five gods and goddesses, Ganesha, Durga, Surya, Shiva and a preferred avatar of Vishnu. Huh. Finally, Shaktas worship the goddess Devi. Shaktas see Devi as the ultimate and eternal reality, like a feminine Brahman. Even though there are all these variations and more, the core beliefs of Hindus remain mostly the same. Hindus believe that Dharma keeps the balance in the universe. <clears throat> if the scales between good and evil start tipping towards evil, 
then something needs to intervene to fix the universe's dharma. This divine intervention is known as an avatar. <laughs> the literal dharma meaning of guy. the word avatar <laughs> is descent. Avatars are gods that descend to earth to intervene whenever help is needed to restore dharma. For example, when the earth was dragged underneath the ocean, Vishnu descended to earth as the avatar Vraha, a boar, and dragged the earth back out. In other cases, Vishnu was born on earth as a human avatar like Rama or Krishna, where he spent his avatar's life fixing dharma. So, the caste system. If you only know one thing about Hinduism, this is probably it. People see it as an oppressive system that locks people in place based on their birth. And for a huge part of history, that's what it's been, unfortunately. Let's do a quick explanation of what the caste system is. This is going to be quite interesting. I'm curious. I've, I've heard about it, but I didn't really learn that much about it. I, what I, from what I remember, it was basically you're born into a ranking system. If you're poor, you're poor. If you're rich, you're rich. You don't move up or down. And I've... Let's see. But I didn't know how many ranking systems there is. I didn't know. I guess I guess the determinant factor is what family you're born in. If your if your family was poor, you could never move up. I don't know if a if a higher ranking family or a rich family could move down. I'm I'm sure they, I'm sure they probably could. I don't know. In Hinduism, there are four castes or classes that you can be born into. There's the Brahmin, the priest, the Kshatriyas, the warriors, the Vishas, the traders, and the Shudras, the manual laborers. The main basis for the caste system can be found in the Bhagavad Gita and the Rig Veda. Krishna says in the Gita, I have created a fourfold system in order to distinguish among one's qualities and functions. The Rig Veda also refers to the four castes. It says humans were created from parts of the god Purusha, the Brahman from his face, the Kshatriya from his arms, the Vaisha his thighs and the Shudra his feet. This system was supposed to assign people functions based on their abilities, not their birth. Hmm. If someone had the qualities of a Brahman or a Vaisha, they could fill those roles. The Gita didn't restrict movement among castes, and the caste system functioned as intended for a while, until a document known as the Laws of Manu came about around the 5th century BC, popularly referred to as the Manu Shmirti. They created hard rules for Hindu life. Two rules presented in it contributed to the way the caste system turned out. Hmm. Manu states that the Brahman were the lords of all castes, and he forbid moving among the castes. So that's what I was more familiar with. Hmm. The caste you were born into was now the caste you're stuck in. Uh -huh. If you give humans <clears throat> a hierarchy, they'll exploit it, and things will go sour pretty quickly. And my belief in the human hierarchy, I watched, um, oh my god, I can't remember the dude's name anyways, that humans tend to f go into this hierarchy, as in, you you know, you got the top 1%, then you got people who are working laborers, I guess the bottom 10% or something like that, it just tends, people just tend to fall in this line, but there's always mobility though, unless the laws are put in place. As time passed, Hindus began thinking in terms of upper and lower castes. Soon, cleaning toilets, tanning leather, and dealing with meat products were thought to be impure. The people doing those jobs mm. became untouchables. The lowest of the low, a people without caste. <clears throat> Jeez, those are the people that feed the people. And the rest is history. The modern world has brought many changes though. Now Hindus mix freely while working together in the same businesses, attending the same schools, and generally just living together. But when it comes to marriage, many Hindus still stick to their own caste. But this too... And is that the reason why it's arranged? ...is changing, and on Hindu dating websites you can actually see people <laughs> list a non-preference for caste. It'll say, caste no bar. That's really, It's kind of weird though, how do you know what caste you're in, you know? I mean, that's a genuine question, like... Uh, I guess if you're poor, you can kind of see that you're lower caste, I suppose. But the middle system is where I guess the biggest question will be. Like, if you're rich, you know you're in the upper caste. If you're poor, you know you're in the lower caste. But in the middle area where there's, I, I see there's four, how do you know which one you're in? Like, you know? <laughs> uh, 
that's a genuine question. Let me know in the comments. So those are the basics of Hinduism. So I had to pause and look at all that. Okay. It isn't even close to covering everything. Yeah, I'm sure. The video simply <laughs> can't do it. Absolutely. Hinduism is too diverse, too deep, and means too many different things to different people. Uh -huh. But learning even the basics of this fascinating and ancient religion gives us an insight into the worldview. Whoa, okay. Um, the signs on... On this dude's chest, if yeah, you can see it. Um, what does it mean in Hindu? Because it definitely means something else in the West. Or Over uh, what, sorry, what does it mean in this perspective? Because in the West, it means something different. I'm sure everyone knows, or everyone knows what it means in the West. But I don't think very many people know what this means in in India. I'm assuming it's an Indi uh, Indian thing people and I hope you enjoyed it you can find all the sources used in the description below if you would like to follow okay so I did see that that sign did have something different I had like dots in the middle so meaning it's it means something different so it had the little dots there in the middle uh, I guess you won't be able to see it. it's too small but yeah okay so that was actually interesting very very interesting i thoroughly honestly enjoyed that and i want to i actually want to go back and document two things it was the the two oh God, i can't remember the two books that he pointed out the first book which was talking about um oh God, I'm, I'm terrible with names honestly but the god came down and talked to i believe it was a prince or a king to convince him to go to war because that was his dharma the second one was the, or the first one, second or first one, was about the four books. And the first book being about basically a way of living life. Let me see if I can go ahead and just go back to it real quick. If I can remember where it was at. Oh, here it is. Okay, so that's the one of the books. Different Dharma than a young merchant, for example or Muhammad for ideas like truth. Veda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. The if, you want, if you want to end now, I'm just going to go back and kind of recap a few things, point out a few things, and then just end the video. So, Five. Belief in the Vedas. We'll take a closer look at the series of cycles. Each yug, universe, like we break from the dharma. Each of a very different dharma, or Muhammad is a collection. Tree, the Sama Veda. Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. Ah, it is I... mostly songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because I it's set it. to music. Four, the Atharva Veda. The Atharva is to somehow get back moksha for four. Added together, the four U's total about four. At the end of each cycle, we are in the four difficult word to translate to English. As long as everything is fine. If they break from the Dharma though, Things will be super not fine. Each being has its own dharma is to rule well. A subscriber's dharma is to smash the like button and <laughs> ring the notification bell. I love his uh, humans, incorporation of their that. specific dharma really good. is usually really. based on their age and their merchant for Hinduism. There is no Jesus, Quran, Tarva Veda is... Anyways. ...sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC God, and 500 BC, somewhere. during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their okay, anyways, oh, and so this is the this book right here, Ramayana. Anyways, yeah, those, those two things, I definitely want to get a closer look at, especially the video. I'm more interested in videos because they're a lot easier to consume than books. And um, especially when people have done research and in, in their explanation on the book and maybe how different people interpret it as well. So anyways, that's my reaction to what is Hinduism, which I absolutely loved. And I want to do Buddhism as well because I'm curious as to how, well, hopefully to talk about the split off of Buddhism from Hinduism, if in fact Buddhism split off from that. And... Um, which again, from my history teacher, not my history teacher, so my world religion teacher told me that it was based on a king that lived a very, very like wealthy life. He never met sorrow, never met sorrow. Like he's a dude, he never had sorrow in his life. You know, the the uh, the prince, sorry, the prince 
the king would always give him, I guess, fresh wives every day, have fresh fruit, fresh food, fresh water, clean clothes, clean cloth, clean whatever. Just always trying to make his son so happy. And one day he, and this is what I understood from Buddhism, that he just left the castle just to see what life was like and noticed that there was a poor, poor person dancing in the street and butt naked and super happy. So that's, uh, I guess I'll explain more of that in the, my Buddhism reaction video if I ever find one. I, I definitely need to find one. If you have one, please leave it down below. That's a good one, please. All right, so that's my reaction to what is Hinduism. Absolutely loved it. I hope I can actually watch more and learn a little bit more. I want to do one in this one and also the first book of the four. Um, I hope to find it. If, not, if, uh, if no one else makes a suggestion, please suggest a good one for those. Even for the four, actually. Just the first one, though, most importantly for me. <laughs> uh, that, that stuck out for me a lot. But uh, anyway, this is my reaction to what is in the Zoom. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.